if you would unmute yourself, totally fine. Okay, so quiz day. Hopefully you guys do amazing on this quiz. Um, get an A to start off this unit. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into our first problem. Make sure I've got it recording. Okay, so day three of introduction to matrices. It says that we have a linear system. So this is it, three different linear systems and they have two variables. It says which type of matrix can be formed using the system of equations? A diagonal, a square, a matrix with three rows, four columns, a matrix with four rows, three columns. So there's a couple of different things that we can talk about here. So if we want to use this whole section, we want to use all of them. And um, when I say the whole, I'm talking about it as an augmented matrix where we include the solutions, different than the coefficients where we're only using our X and Y. So if I want to do the augmented matrix, so vocabulary, then it would look something like this. It'd be three, negative two, negative two, where these are my equation, equation one, two, three. This is my X, my Y, and my solution. And a lot of times when we do that solution, we do this little dotted line to kind of show it's separated there. So then I would have seven, three, and 26 for the second equation. And I would have negative one, negative 11, and negative 46. So what kind of matrix do I have? I'm gonna talk about diagonal matrix in the next one um, to show you what that looks like. Um, but do I have a square? When I look at the dimensions, I have three rows. Remember, it's always rows by, and I have one, two, three columns. So it is what we would call a three by three matrix, which is square. Same number of rows, same number of columns. It's gonna give you a square. It's gonna give me a square. Um, so when we talk about matrix with three rows, four columns, you can see there's only three columns and so on. So it's only gonna be that square matrix option. Now, if they ask for the coefficient matrix, if they ask about the coefficient matrix, the coefficient matrix is only this piece right here. So the coefficient matrix would have been a three by two. So it's only using the coefficients of the variables. So my next question is, uh, which of these is a diagonal? That's why I said I'll come to it because we actually are gonna look for which one of these is a diagonal matrix. So we hadn't talked about this yet in our lesson. So what makes it a diagonal matrix? Well, when we're talking about a diagonal matrix, we wanna have it so that we have this diagonal going across from our top left to our bottom right. We have our diagonal going across. And so when I look here, I have this diagonal. That's what we're looking for is for this diagonal of values, diagonal of values. And again, I said a diagonal of values different than here where we have a bunch of zeros. But what's different between these two? What is different between these two? Well, when I talk about I'm looking for my diagonal matrix, here's what the most important thing is to go with that diagonal is that when I have my diagonal matrix, what's under my diagonal, my triangle under my diagonal is all zeros. I want them to all be zeros. So this would make my diagonal matrix. This 16 right here isn't a zero, so it messes it up. Notice I have my zeros above my diagonal, but that's not the same. I want it to be below it. And you'll see later on in the unit why that's so important. But the focus is going to be that we have our diagonal of values and everything below it is going to be zero. And then also notice everything above this one is also zeros. So it's only that diagonal of values. This 16 ruins it. So you want it to be followed by all zeros. All right, my next one. So we're told that they're equal. C and D are equal. So if they're equal, that means that every one of these elements inside are going to be equal and corresponding locations matter. So if I look here, this four is going to match with my D11. Now remember this notation, this, in this case, it's a D33. The first number is always, always, always going to be our row. The second number is always talking about our column. 
So one of the three threes, kind of like that, doesn't really matter because they could be switched and you wouldn't even know. But it's not always going to be like that. So be careful. It's always row, column, row, column. When you do your dimensions, it's row, column, row, column. Um, so if I'm looking for three, three element D, three, three, I want to go to my row three. So one, two, three. So we know we're working on this row. And I need to be in my column three. So if I'm in column three, column one, two, three, I'm in column three. I want row three column three, then it's going to be this number where they overlap. That's my D33. Three, three. You can see it right there. Where does that correlate over here? At my negative seven. So you can count over one, two, three, down one, two, three, and you're at your negative seven. And there we go. Done. This was even easier because they gave you this. You could just kind of fit, like eyeball where it's at. You didn't even have to count it. But I want to make sure you guys understand how to figure it out. And my very last one. Okay. The matrix below represents the number of minutes four friends spend driving to each other's homes each week. So here's our friends. But I like to label more information because there's going to be some more info. A row, blah, blah. A row label represents the friend driving. So the rows are talking about the friend that is driving. That's important. A column represents a friend being visited. So these are the people who are being visited. It's important because if friend three drives to visit friend two, it's different than friend two driving to visit friend three. So even though there's the same friend seeing each other, it's different depending on who's driving and who is visiting. So it's very important that you know which one is what. So here's what the question says. How many minutes does friend one spend driving. So we're talking about friend one is driving. Friend one is driving to visit friend three. Friend three. So we're going friend one to friend three. And we're right here at that value of 45, which is this one right here. And we're done. So my biggest thing for you guys is label these so that you can visually see which one, because when you're talking about a friend and a friend, it makes it hard when you see them here. How do you know which one's what? But it will tell you. Row means this. Columns is representing this. And again, I want to emphasize that if these were switched, if friend three was driving to see friend one, it was a zero. So it doesn't work the same. It's not um, commutative. So you need to watch out for that. Do I have any questions before you guys are off today for your quiz? All right, we'll start a new lesson tomorrow, new section. Um, so hopefully you guys do amazing on this. Reach out if you need anything. Otherwise, you guys have a blessed day. Take care. Bye.